I have another knife I want to share with you today, and this is one that I'm really excited about. This is the Work Tough Gear Voyageur. If you're interested, keep watching. Before we get started, just a couple of things I want to mention. First, I want to thank Vic Lynn at Work Tough Gear for sending out the Voyageur so that I could share it with you. This is a knife I'm very excited to share with you, and in full disclosure, I am kind of biased towards it. The reason is it's a collaboration between myself and Alex at Aurora Borealis Knives in Quebec, Canada. Now, the true story is, is that Alex designed the knife. He just bounced ideas off of me. Maybe I gave him a little inspiration to get start it with but it is Alex's design but I have have some input on this and I'm very proud of what it turned out to be so just another couple thoughts on it I've heard this knife been referred to as the Voyager it's not the Voyager it's the Voyager and it's a distinction that I want to make because this is a piece of Canadian history Voyageurs were the explorers from France who came to Canada in the 18th and 19th century and opened up Western Canada by canoes and crossland portages, trading with the First Nations people as they gathered pelts and other things to take home to France. And it was the French trade knife that they brought with them that they did a lot of trading for. So that's where the inspiration for this knife came from. It is based on the French trade knife of the 18th and 19th century, a true piece of Canadiana history. So just a little bit there. All right, what we're going to do, as always with any knife, is I'll bring the camera in, focus in on the knife itself, give you some of the specifications for it. They will all be in the video description, of course. I want to talk about its design much further, not extensively, but, you know, some, somewhat further. And, of course, we're going to do a number of demonstrations with it. All right, let's get started. All right, just before we focus in on the knife itself, I want to share with you the sheath that came with it. And of course, it's very much like all the sheaths from Work Tough Gear, Kydex done to perfection. I say that every time, of course, because every time, of course, it is true. Vic does excellent, excellent Kydex work. Drain hole, of course, lots of attachment points, great retention, as you'll see in a moment. And this is the belt clip that came with mine. Now, let's just put the knife in the sheath. And, I mean, there's no way that's coming out unintentionally. It has almost excessive uh, snap to it, almost excessive, but at least you know it's not going to come out unintentionally. All right, let's put the sheath aside. Now, I do have a few notes here to give you the specifications off of, but we'll go through those nice and quickly. Overall length from tip to pommel, 10.1 inches, 256 millimeters. Blade length is 5.6 inches, which is 142 millimeters. Blade thickness is 0.157, which is 5 30 seconds of an inch or 4 millimeters. Weight for the knife is 10 ounces even, 283 grams. With the sheath, it bumps up to 12.8 ounces, 363 grams. The steel is SK85, hardened to fit between 56 and 58 on the Rockwell scale. And the handle is G10, multi-layer G10. I believe it's three colors. It looks like green, brown, and orange. But of course, it just could be green and orange where it's flat, where it's meshing through yeah okay we're going to call it green and orange there's actually no brown in that it just kind of looks like that all right let's start with the design itself and i did say this is based on a french trade knife so this is where it gets its inspiration now it is an interpretation it's not an exact copy but you'll see a lot of similarities if you want to look up french trade knives of the 18th and 19th century you'll see the similarities but it certainly still fulfills the mission of the original french trade knife and that, of course, was a do-all camp knife. It's the, it's the tool that the voyageurs and then the First Nations people who traded with the voyageurs would use for basically everything. It was their food prep knife, their butchering knife, their fire prep knife, their, you know, food, I said food prep, of course, meat cutting up, vegetables cutting up, whatever it is that needed to be done. Any task that they had to have a sharp implement for, short of an axe for taking down large timber, this is the knife that would cover it. Now, this is modernized and uses more modern materials, but it still lives up to that expectation. So a few of the things, of course, is that it does have a drop point. Now, the point is not perfectly centered on the handle, 
but it's not far off. So it's great for drilling that way. I'll do a demonstration of how that could occur. It still has quite a bit of belly, so it's still going to be very useful for skinning. And of course, with that drop point, you can get in under a skin and not puncture any organs as you run the knife down through the animal hide. It has a high saber grind, but and that provides a really great slicing ability. I certainly can attest to that. It's not a full flat grind, so it still has some of the flat area up here, giving the knife a lot of strength right across the spine, of course. And because of the blade height from here to here, there is still a lot of metal and thins out though very nicely, but it makes for a very strong knife that is very slicely at the same time. Now there is a small, yeah, very small sharpening choil and guard before and ricasso before you reach the handles. Now let's just take a look at the handles for a minute because it's, you know, a knife blade, no matter how nice it is, is not going to be as functional as you want it to be if the handles don't match the intent, intended use of the knife, we'll say. Okay, so let's just take a look at this. Do these handles look familiar? Well, I'm going to show you another knife in a minute that uh, has exactly the same handles. When I mean exactly, you could exchange one for the other. These are the same handles that comes on the Work Tough Gear Forester, also designed by Alex at Aurora Borealis Knives. They're the exact same handles. I'm going to say somewhat improved. And of course, I recently reviewed the new or Generation 2 uh, Foresters, and uh, they had a little bit change in the handle material, not so much the material, but the finish, where the old ones had a gator, like a crosshatch. These are smoother. They still is has some texture, but it's less aggressive on your hand. The other uh, nice upgrade, of course, is that the thumb scallops have been included this time. So what's so big? What's the big deal with handles like this? I mean, they're not what you might call sexy. They're not what you call dramatic. They're simple, very simple handles, but it's because of that simplicity that gives them the versatility. First off, the original uh, French trade knives had just simple, rounded, kind of, uh, what would you call them, broom handle style handles for the most part. And uh, this one kind of goes that way, but gives it some slight improvements. As you can see, there is a fair amount of belly in the center for the palm swell. And that palm swell is repeated on the sides, but there seem to be fairly flat sided and that is true still nice and rounded over the top and one of the things I really appreciate is this depth right here I'll explain why in a moment so there is a little bit of a choil for the forward part just behind the guard to give you a little bit of sense of security and control and the same thing at the back here there's also a little bit of tapering here so it has a little bit of that coke bottle look that we refer to it but all important of course is the rounded pommel and of course you can see the hidden lanyard hole there that is in behind so it kind of gets it out of the way. Yes, I do have a little piece of orange paracord as I do usually. But the loop is a little bit bigger on this. I'll explain why in a few moments time. So what is the big deal? Well, it's a handle like this that you can use this knife and virtually every handhold that you can, well, probably want to use a knife for. So certainly forward grip like this, side grip like this for running the knife through a chest lever cut. In reverse, if you felt the need to, you can palm the knife very well for working as a drill or any downward um, action you have to do. You can hold on to the knife very comfortably for stabbing, like splits of wood. Uh, yeah, it's just a nice generalized knife handle that you can hold in any hand grip and still feel secure and still feel like you have good control over the blade itself. It really is in my mind, one of the best handles, at least for a knife like this. It's not a chopping handle. It doesn't have a big beak to hold onto your hand and to keep it from coming out with centrifugal force, but this isn't a chopping knife. This is a camp knife, a do-all knife. Now, I did say I wanted to bring in the Forester to share with you so that you can see. This is probably my other most favorite knife, at least right now, that I carry with me in the woods. So I have these two with me today. You can see they're identical handles. You could exchange them one for the other. And the Forester Gen 2 in Saber Grime. Really like this knife. So depends really what you want, I guess. If you want a little bit smaller knife because you don't have a need for the bigger knife, then the Gen 2 Forester is great. But if you want a little bit bigger knife, then the Voyageur is the one that's going to fit the bill. Very, very similar in many ways. Same thickness of steel. Same, well, I'm going to say the same basic kind of profile to the blades, but it's true that there's a bit of a difference there. Of course, there's more of a drop on the Voyager. Let me just put the Gen 2 Forester out of the way. 
Okay, so this is the basic design of the knife. Now, oh, I just want to make a comment on this. I think it's only fair to do so. First off, let me show you the modern, the uh, engraved marks. There's the Work Tough Gear knife, and right behind it is Alex's logo for Aurora Borealis Knives. And it should say, oh yeah, there's Voyager there. You can see it right there on the Ricasso. SK85 steel. If you're looking at this and say, Mark, your knife is awfully dirty. It looks like it may have been rusting a little bit. Uh, yeah, you're right. It had. It, and this is the thing I want to say. It is carbon steel. Now, Alex is talking about a, uh, another version at some point in one of the stainless steels that Vic does so well. But for the first run of most knives, they do them in SK85. Can't beat it, really, as far as toughness goes and value and, and just overall uh, you know, good quality and for the knife. However, it's a carbon steel, not a stainless steel. So I use this a lot around the kitchen. I mean a lot. This sat and became my, my kitchen knife for a couple of weeks where I would cut up meat and vegetables and everything else. Started to take a patina on it. I'd wash it off. I'd put it away. But on one occasion, I did not oil the knife before I put it away. How easy would this have been in the kitchen? A little bit of olive oil or something that could have run down the knife. I dried it. At least I thought I dried it. It didn't quite dry. And yes, you can see some speckles where there was a little bit of rust on it. Easy enough to get off. I have autosol. I haven't used it on the knife yet. Autosol or even toothpaste if the rust is light enough. A little steel wool sometimes if that's what you need. There's a few scratches you can see on it from getting it off with something heavier, which I probably shouldn't have done, sand. But uh, yeah, overall, you do have to take care of your carbon steel knives. Now, I think anyone who understands steel, knife steel understands that they have to do that. It was my best. Bad. I didn't oil it as much as well as I should have. I didn't oil it at all that one time, and this is what can happen to your knife. Just the same, maybe, and I think it just gives it a little bit more character. So now there's only one thing left to do. Let's put it into use. All right, I, I uh, <laughs> wanted to give myself a good test for the Voyager, so to, just to demonstrate what its capabilities are. And, uh, well, hopefully I haven't gone too far with this. This is a piece of, I believe, rock maple. It certainly looks like it right now, and but I won't know for sure until I get it split open. You can see the bark is all off of it, so that's no help here. But, uh, 12, 13 or 14 inches, thir yeah, 13 or 14 inches, three and a half, almost four inches in diameter. Um, and heavy. So this is a solid, solid piece of wood. At least there's no knots in it, at least that I can see. So, all right. Very, very trying to find a good place for this. Now, true story. I would not do this normally, right? This is not what you do with your knife. You don't baton through big pieces of wood. I mean, I have knives that you can do it with. They're much bigger than the Voyageur. But if the knife, it's your, not, not, yeah, because you could refer to this as a survival knife, and you would not be wrong. It's certainly got the length of blade and the ability to do all types of survival tasks. So, yeah, this would normally be something I would use an axe for, or one of the huge knives that I have. But in this case, we're going to, it's more demonstration. If you can span it, you can baton it. So let's do exactly that. All right, so it's going in easily. Actually, the wood is splitting right up nicely. Just a word on using a flat, full flat grind or a high saber grind as opposed to something that has just a lower grind, like a Scandi grind. Scandi grinds tend to split wood better than full flats or sabers because they open the wood up faster and then really the wood's not even touching the sides of the knife. Not in this case, it's actually got a hold of the whole steel of the knife. Yeah. All right. You can hear how hard that is. This is what I didn't want to do, but We'll do anyway, which is to hammer on the handle. All right. Oh yeah. All right, I gave this a really good test. Oh, it is rock maple <laughs> and, not, and not oak. I mean, not a lot difference in terms of hardness. It's just that I find rock maple is a little bit easier when it comes to feathering than oak is. They're still very hard woods. Okay. Good, hard piece of wood, but at least the grain is nice and uh, straight on this. I'm going to thin this out or take a number of splits off it, Some, one of which I'm going to turn into a tent peg, another I'm going to do some feather sticking with, but I am also want to do some point 
uh, stabbing and splitting with this knife just to show you that the point is plenty strong as well. So I'm going to split this down into some smaller pieces and then I'll bring you back. All right, this next demonstration is a bit... Uh, some people don't agree with it. I'm fine with it. You just have to know what you're doing when you go to do it. And that is using the tip of your knife to split small, thinner pieces like this to make even finer kindling with it. Now, you do have to have a, the knife that is designed for it, something that has a good tip on it and something that has a good guard on it because you're virtually going to be stabbing the wood upside down like this. So, yeah, it's uh, you do this if you feel confident doing it. But the idea is basically you just take your knife and that's all you have to do, maybe twice. Move the wood up. You can pull it apart if you want a smaller piece. Do it again. Maybe right there. And you can keep splitting your wood down like that. It's a great way to make even smaller, smaller splits off of medium sized ones. Not for large pieces, obviously. You'd still be batoning those. For, for little tiny ones, you can go much finer than that with it as well, just to get that very, very fine kindling to start with. All right, let's put those aside. And what did I pick up here for making a tent peg? All right, kind of a small piece, but I think it'll work for the demonstration. So I w just wanted to show a little bit of cross batoning. In fact, I think I'll cut a, you know what? No, well, hold on a minute. I'm going to cut a larger stick so that I can show you full on cross batoning rather than showing it on a tent peg. So just give me a minute to do that. All right, I just split out another one from that same piece of wood and this has got to be a little over an inch. You can see across and, uh, Normally when I'm making a tent peg, I just put it, you know, the edge of the knife in, I go in a short ways, then I carve out the L7 notch. What I wanted to do is just a little bit more, not extreme, but a little bit more work, a little bit harder use on the knife. So I just want to go all the way through at this point. All right, that even easier. Of course, hard wood like that, so smooth. Let's do it again. It's always kind of fun like that. Yeah, two cuts each time. That's all it's taken to do this. So I'm now I'm cutting it down to the size I would use for my firebox or something. And I can say with confidence, without even having to look, no edge glimmers, nothing showing on this knife that it's even done any work yet at all. All right, now let's, uh, let's go right to feather sticking this time. All right, same piece of wood. Another split off of it. Just looking it over. That's great grain. Shouldn't have any issue here. There is a knot there, so I'll work off of this end. And the whole point here is, can you feather stick with a big knife like this? Well, if that first one is any indication, the answer is yes, but let's keep going. Boy, that edge really wants to bite in, so I just have to be a little cautious not to bite in so deeply. I'm getting some really fine curls. It kind of reminds me of using the Gen 2 Forester in Sabre Grind. Unlike a Scandi Ground knife, which you just lift up a little bit until you feel the bite and then you're good, Saber grind takes just a little bit more, I don't know, if getting used to. Yeah, I guess it is getting used to finding the edge because you, the difference between just enough bite and too much bite is actually not much difference at all. That edge is a little harder. Oh, there we go. That's a bit better. May not be the best feather stick ever, but this will certainly do some feather sticking work. All right, scraping uh, feather stick. I'm just going to use the other end of it, see if I can't get some fuzz off of this that can be used if I wanted it to, to catch a spark. And the answer, of course, is... I'd say yes. The answer is yes to that. You can definitely scrape with the back of the knife. Now that's hard maple. What about fatwood? Well, let's do a little fatwood scraping. Yeah, right there should do it.
This knife is born to scrape. All right, one last scraping task, and that is with the ferrocerium rod. Shouldn't take much to work to get this lit. And that would be it. All right, yes, this knife will scrape. All right, there is one more aspect to a knife that I find very important, and that's its ability to carve. You have to be able to do more than just food prep. You have to do more than fire prep. You also want to be able to carve wood for you because, of course, if it's going to be a bushcraft knife, it does have to be able to craft things. So for a crafting knife, you need a fine tip, and there's no question that the Voyageur has that fine tip on it. So that's one of the things I appreciated about Alex's design is that you have a knife that's strong enough and it's properly designed for all the other tasks but still maintains that fine tip for carving. Plenty strong for stabbing into wood or I guess anything else you'd need it to stab into but for carving. Now this is another one of those splits off of that maple. Boy it is hard hard wood but I just wanted to show you that basically you can use this knife to carve if you want, needed to carve a spoon or anything else. I didn't even show you that chest lever cut that I was going to show you. So chest lever cut, that's using the blade of course, demonstrating just how comfortable it is to use in that reverse grip. But it is that tip that if you wanted to carve spoons, now I wouldn't be carving spoons out of hardened maple, that I would not hesitate to use this knife. Now it is a little long, but you can still get up on the blade because of its width and carve into the tight corners that you need to to create a spoon. It's still controllable in that way. That's what I wanted to show you there. I guess if there was one thing about the knife that I might change is that is right here. Now it's a 90 degree spine, plenty sharp for, for scraping as you saw, um, but right up here I don't do a lot of scraping with the tip so I may actually round this over a little bit and if you're asking why, spend a day carving with your thumb on the back of a knife and you'll start to appreciate what a rounded spine does as far as comfort goes, like even that's starting to get a little hard on the thumb. Have, you know a little bit of time but not bad but if you really want to have a knife that you can curve with for long periods of time you need to have a bit of a rounding. I'll leave this much of the blade plenty sharp so I can scrape anything it is that I want to scrape especially ferrocerium and fatwood but I might just round off the last couple of inches maybe that much of the blade so I can do some carving with it. Okay let's wrap this video up with a few closing thoughts. So the Work Tough Gear Voyageur, designed by Alex at Aurora Borealis Knives, with maybe just a few little hints here and there that I was able to throw into it, enough that I can claim that it has a little bit of my DNA, my heritage in it, enough to, and you know, came out something that if I really was a knife designer, this is the one I'd like to be able to claim as my own. It's not mine, of course, it is Alex's, and you know, it's just, okay, does it fit the bill? Is it a worthy successor to the early French trade knives carried by the voyageurs in the 18th and 19th century? Better in every way. Better in every way. Stronger, more modern metallurgy, but more well thought out in terms of what it's intended to do. It's not just a butcher knife. It is also a woods knife, a camp knife, and a crafting knife. So it does all of those things even better than the original French trade knives. And you can't beat that handle. For a round, you know, I know it again. again it looks simple, but it's that simplicity of that handle that makes it so comfortable in so many grips. So what am I trying to say? How would I sum this up? All right, if you're looking for just one knife that you are going to carry and do most of your tasks, I say most, I mean, it's not an ax, it's not a huge chopping knife, but most of your tasks, then this may be one you want to look at, especially if you want to use it for food prep. Uh, just uh, don't do what I did. Just make sure after you clean it up that you do and dry it and do oil it so you don't get any rust on it. I mean, it'll come off. Uh, it's not the end of the world. It's just, you know, if you're trying to keep your knives pristine, well, if you're trying to keep your knives pristine, what are you doing bringing them out into the woods? They're going to get some marks on them anyway. And and this one has gained enough through the testing that I'm quite happy with it. You know, okay, I could go on and on. I really, really like this knife. Again, I'd suggest if you're looking for the one camp knife, nothing too big, but big enough to do all the tasks you're likely to do around the camp, 
this may be the one that you want to take a look at. All right, if you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments section below. The links, all the links that at least I'm aware of, including not just Work Tough Gear, but all the resellers from the US, Europe, and Canada, right here in Nova Scotia, I'll have them in the video description. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.